I'm here today primarily to talk about Rotolite, um, how they changed my career as a photographer, how they changed the way I think a lot about lighting, how they um, made a big difference to me as a photographer in a time where a lot of things were changing. Um, there's a couple of couple of times in, in my career that something has happened that's been a real noticeable shift and not a gradual shift. Um, the first thing was kind of the introduction of digital as our primary uh, shooting device. And that happened super, super fast. And all of a sudden it was film and then it was digital. Um, when that happened, you know, I, I had to make a, a load of alterations in how I thought and how I shot. Now it's kind of second nature. And then going back to film now is kind of weird that you have to think the other way. So um, one of the things that happened with digital that I never truly got to grips with was, and I'm not a technical photographer, so excuse my terms if they're wrong, but I never seemed to get a film feel with strobe lighting and digital sensors. It always looked slightly off. I made it, look, it could look great. It was super advantageous to have the digital, but there was always, I felt something missing that it just looked, it just didn't look as, as good as film looked. Um, so it was something I'd kind of, probably been shooting like that for four or five years and kind of forgot about it and just accepted that was my new norm. Um, and then I went to uh, uh, one of the shows in New York a few years ago and I saw these road lights and uh, you know, they kind of looked cool. That was the first thing that caught my eye and I talking to the guys there and they're doing the sale about you know, the, um, there's this amount of light and that amount of light and it does this and it does that and it does this, which all went completely over my head because light to me is light and I'm not that focused on that kind of aspect of it, but they kind of look cool. And I think they had a little setup and I took a couple of frames on a camera that I had in my bag, you know, and I really liked this, um, the feel that I could actually see what I was shooting and whatever. I went back and I, probably forgot about it for a while and then went to that card and I looked at a couple of the pictures that I had taken that day on set and all of a sudden I saw that I had this kind of almost film feel back again with my digital sensor and I got super super excited so I called the guys at Rotelot I said forget all the negative stuff I said to you I'd really like to kind of try one of these or so um, they were enthusiastic and they sent me a couple of lights to try and I did some tests and I, I, I was just very, very excited because I felt that I was kind of kicking it back to the days when I used to shoot film. Um, and all of a sudden I was shooting with a digital sensor, but uh, I, I was getting this film feel. So after some practice, I think the first commercial job um, that I used a Rotolite for was this picture of, her name has gone out of my head, as they always do. Anybody? Margot Robbie. Um, and as I, was, as I was shooting with it professionally for the first time, I really got the feeling that a couple of things were happening. Number one, there was no constant strobing in her face. So that felt really good because I was able to talk. She was a little unaware of when I was taking photographs so I was able to capture moments that she may have been a little more def defensive about. Um, and it just, it felt a much more natural way for me to shoot. And I was really excited about it. But once again, what I was most excited about was that, that the quality, it had a quality more like film that I was unused to seeing. So I brought, I brought some pictures through. Um, I don't know if anybody knows any of my pictures, but I brought some that I really like from Rotolite. And this one kind of goes to that example of being able to shoot whilst having a conversation and not bombarding somebody with a strobe, bombarding myself with it. Um, you know, my, the, the shutter on my camera is fairly quiet, so it's not this, you know exactly what's going to happen. There's no timing involved. You can hit the off timing and still... Um, 
you know, you're getting this beautiful feel. So this guy's name is, because I can't remember. I, you know, whenever I do these, I know who all these people are, but the names go out. If you ask me my wife's name right now, I'd forget it, because I wouldn't actually. It's Katie, if you're watching. <laughs> Katie, my wife. Um, so then I thought this is one of the most recent celebrity porches I did with Road Light, and why I wanted to include this is because uh, Alex or I, Alex and I were in a bit of a tricky situation. Um, nothing was kind of going on time. We were expecting to have a little more available light than we did. Um, the place we were shooting was very small, and they didn't want me to have a lot of equipment. So we just packed up a couple of the little uh, what, neos, neos, and so we had a couple of roll lights in our bag for emergencies. Of course, it turns into an emergency when you know it's almost pitch black outside, and uh, pitch black inside. We had no light, so Alex um, pulled out one of the neos and just literally held it, handheld it here, and you know with with the modern cameras, you can go a little higher on your ISO. You don't have to worry about it so much. And this portrait came out, and I was just astounded by how little equipment lighting equipment I needed to, to make this portrait. Obviously, it's been an enhanced a little bit in post-process, but, but the details there and the image is there and the quality of the light is there. Uh, and once again, and maybe it looks a little over-sharpened there, but, but once again, it had this filmic feel about it, which I, I was not getting from strobe on my digital sensor. Um, also, I don't do a ton of beauty type work um, I, I like to show people a little more real, how they look in real life. So my beauty work tends not to make people, you know, like for skincare or anything. It's, it's not really my thing. But I found that with the Rotolite, there's something about um, the, the, the constant light that even though the source is a hard source, um, if it's not um, modified at all, there's something about it which has a softness um, that I think plays into this kind of feel of film grain or something. But for this, there's very little retouching on that. And of course, she had lovely skin. Um, but I, I was super pleased that I was able to get as much contrast and feel out of it just with a couple of lights. Actually, how many is on that? I think there's two rot lights and a, 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 fill, a fill or a Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I, I. 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 Yeah. So I love the spread of it, and I love how it feels. Um, and it kind of inspired me to do a little more beauty work, which I'd never really wanted to do before. Still don't want to do. But if you pay me, I'll be there. Um, s similar kind of thing. Just. Just. Uh, being able to have somebody there and be able to talk to them, be able to provoke a reaction, be able to get some kind of communication between you and your subject and be able to capture that without, oh, he's taking photos right now, I think is really, really important. I think it works very well for Mrs. Bond. That's who she is, isn't it? She's not married to Daniel Craig. She is, right? Her name's gone out of my head, but I know she's Mrs. Bond. Um, so as, as, I, as I got a little more familiar with the lights and as um, I actually got a set of three instead of two, I began to experiment a little bit with something I used to like to do in the past with strobe, and that's to put one you know, to the back and use it as kind of a, a, a rim light or a fill light from the side. Um, and you know, obviously this, when I developed, when I started to develop how to do this, it was like a freak accident. But I was finding that I got this beautiful effect where just by lighting from the back and really having control by being able to physically see it instead of strobe, I could really dial it in to exactly how I wanted that um, side light to be. And I was starting to, I started to get, and I, I still use this a lot, is to get this beautiful 3D dimension in my photographs. Um, just using a couple of lights. I think that's only two lights. Um, but was really th th this idea that the, the, the portraits almost had, it doesn't work for everyone, but this idea that I could photograph people and get this three-dimensional di look 
whilst actually being able to see what it's going to look like before you take the photo was really cool for me. Um, that's another example of the same thing, um, just trying to find an angle, trying to find where to shoot, getting your backlight in, and then just just being able to see it and knowing, you know, with the strobe, with uh, for me with the strobe, even if you have your modeling lights on, it's not a true representation of what the strobe's going to do, right? It's always going to look different. I know it comes up straight away on your tether, or you can look down on your camera. I, know, I mean, obviously, we know that, but just the ability to see it before you shoot it and to work yourself into that position whilst knowing what your light's going to look like, to me, is a super advantage because I often don't have very long with these people before I piss them off or say something stupid. Um, so, you know, being able to get, get your shot quickly as well is super important. Um, another thing I really like about the lights is I use them a lot. Alex, what was the expression you used? As a practical light, which I just learned today what it is. When you're not actually using it for light, but you're just using it to, uh, you know, make your set more interesting. So, you know, sometimes uh, if you're in a space or if I'm in a space where I don't have a lot of interest in the background, but I want to do something, I found that just popping a rotor light in does two things. Um, number one, it just is giving me that beautiful light there, which is not, fl not blowing out and it's keeping all the detail there. But number two, it's making a really interesting aspect to my photograph. So um, I probably overdo it, but I use it a lot. And people really seem to respond to the, like, the barn doors. And it, it gives a kind of old Hollywood feel to my pictures, which I really like on certain people. Um, that's another one of the same kind of thing. Um, also sponsored by Leica. So if I can get Leica and Rotolite in the same shot, like it's a big money day for me. <laughs> I mean, you know, Leica might give me a lens cap if I could do something like that. Rotolite might give me an extra barn door. So, you know, that's a, that's a real payday for me. Uh, Ewan McGregor, another, like, if I, what, what I like is if I have like a face I think can handle it, you know, I can push the drama. So, you know, really side light it from this side and then just bring that little bit of highlight in and keep the detail in the eye. And once again, it's all coming from two lights. Sometimes, as I'm sure some of you know, we have to set more lights up so the client's happy because if he sees more lights, he thinks you're obviously better at what you do. But, um, you know, often for my portraits, one light or two lights, um, which we'll show you in some live demos. Um, don't know why that's in there. Let's move on. Uh, Justin Timberlake's wife, Jessica Biel. Uh, <laughs> this is for real. I think it's going in my head. So uh, once again, you know, playing with that beauty aspect, pull, pulling the pulling the light a little further back, so we're getting more spread. Um, being able to have her actually, you know. Um, I find often with strobe that, you know, if, so, if something's set and you kind of move even a tiny little bit, you, you, your whole lighting's off. Um, what I find with these is at least if my lighting's off, I can see it and adjust for it. So another, I think a two light, two light setup, yeah, a key from this side and a fill from this side. Um, and having her lean in and be able to shoot while she's emoting um, was, was what made for that picture. Um, another thing, uh, you know, often on location, you, you know, you go into a room or you go into space and the light's beautiful and you want to capture that light. And, you know, um, the, the light in the room, the natural light is really how the room looks great. But you're in this situation where you need to highlight something or another. So what I found is just having a rotor light, you know, um, I can like if for this is uh, Aldous Hodge for the watch for, for watches. And just being able to put a road light here, just out of frame here, really allowed me to highlight that watch. Um, back again in the strobe days, I'm sure you guys are, you may not remember, but we'd have to power down that strobe so much to get that tiny little bit of light. Um, whereas, you know, with the rotor light, you can just have it exactly where you want and you can see what it's going to look like before you do it. So that's pretty cool. It's another good use of it. Um, I just put him in because he's the sexiest man I've ever met. And, and I, I love the photo of him. 
and when he introduced himself, he went, I am Antonio Banderas. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm Mark. He was a lot sexier than that, <laughs> and he has swagger. But uh, you know, he was you know he was just talking to me there, and we were just talking through the shoot, and um, you know, I'm 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 just taking photos as we talk, and I, I you know you, I just know that the light's right and everything's right, and if I can just capture that right, you know, millisecond of time, I'm gonna get this picture, and I can actually see it while it's happening, and to me, that's that's super super exciting. Um. Uh, so, um, another thing, uh, what I something I like about road lights, and I, uh, once again, technically, I'm not sure why this is, but um, you know, back when we used to shoot film, we used to shoot color or black and white, you know, or have one back with color, one back with black and white, alternate. Now, you know, we are, well, I'm sure we all shoot raw files, so we're all primarily shooting color files and then doing conversions to black and white. There's some amazing black and white converters out there. Um, but once again, when I was converting from digital to black and white using a strobe, I never felt that I got like this beautiful pure black and white. Um, and then something about the way the, the rotor light light hits skin when I convert to black and white, I just feel it has more of a, a black and white film quality than, than I get with strobe. It might be because I'm a technically terrible photographer and you guys out there might be able to do it, but for me, the conversion to black and white becomes a lot, lot easier um, when I'm shooting road lights. So that's why I put that in. I just put in him in because he's really funny um, and it's a one light shot and I really liked it. Um, this is something I did super recently and there's kind of a, a, a reason why this is in because uh, Jessica Lang has been in this business an awful, awful long time and she knows her angles and she knows how she likes her light. So I was kind of told beforehand, make sure that you do beauty light for Miss Lang because if you go in and the lights look weird to her, she's going to get upset. So, you know, Alex and I spent some time and we put the light in the right place and she came in and she sat down on the chair and she just lifted her chin and she goes, I love the light, boys, like that. And then, you know, she got the light. And, that, and, and you know, just the aesthetic of sitting in front of this um, was really nice. And that's good for me that if somebody's comfortable in front of my light and doesn't feel intimidated and kind of feels it's, it's right, then once again, that allows you to get a picture which is the most important thing. Uh, whoops. Uh, yeah, it's just another example of the conversion to black and white. I, I really feel this has like a, a tri-x feel about it, and it's really easy for me to get there um, to do my conversion from, from the color. Another example of um, a situation where, you know, the light's beautiful and you don't want to destroy it by strobe, but you do need some fill. So there's a, there's a road light just literally offset here. No, sorry. Sorry, there's two. There's two. There's one offset here, one offset there. And they're just filling him in nicely. And the, the, the vignette is pretty natural. So another situation where you can keep the light that, you, that, that exists, but um, supplement it and, and make a pretty image on location. Um, and the other thing which is great about that is because these guys run on V batteries as well. Um, is that what they're called? V, ba v mount batteries. Uh, you know, you can be somewhere where you have no electricity. And if I put a V mount battery on, I, I think about six, 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 eight hours at kind of maybe not full power, but uh, you know, so, so I find that super, super useful as well going places where, you know, we used to like shoot a lot in New York and used to go into these apartment buildings, you used to plug your strobe in and you used to blow the fuse box for the building. So not having to blow fuse boxes um, is great. And also even if they're on electricity, I can have four or five of them on one outlet without it being a big problem for the, for the fuse box, which is really good for me. I finished with Alice Cooper because he's Alice Cooper and I just, I love this image. Once again, it's just one little Neo 
that Alex is hand holding. Is it a Neo or an EOS? It's an EOS. It's an EOS. I'm sorry. So it's an EOS that Alex is hand holding and really pretty close in. And I just love the quality of the light. I just just really appeals to me and it's Alice Cooper so why not so that is a little history of uh, what I've been doing with road lights over the last few years and I thought it would be pretty good to show you actually physically how I use them um, this is Courtney and what's important to know about Courtney is she's a person first and not a model okay I got it right today so I thought we'd uh, we'd start off just with one rotor light and pretty raw and just actually show you the process of of how how I I would use this. This is Alex. Alex yeah. Alex is completely going to help me here. I'll be plugging my computer in. Yeah. That's a smart move. Thanks, Jakey. Um, I did a couple of tests beforehand in the spirit of all honesty to make sure that everything was working. But this is pretty much how um, how I would use this. All right. So, I should, uh, what kind of kind of build this up a little bit here? Um, I don't know if you guys can see, but you can see what that light is doing. You can see that it's completely shaping the face here. Again, a little fall off here. This is probably too far, too far away for it to bounce back in. Um, we're getting catch light in the eye. Not too much shadow at 45 degrees. And I'll, I'll take a picture of what it looks like. Um, excuse my slow tethering. It's just how it is right now. It's going to get better. Oh, I have to turn this on to the thingy to make the thing work. I should hear nice noises. Yeah, I think we're going to work. All right. OK. <sighs> Here we go. So just dead straight. Um, I'll take three photos, because that will only take like an hour for them to come in. If I take any more, it could take several hours. This is not obviously not a rotolite light problem. This is a, a other problem. So one light, um, and I set it to black and white setting. The reason I've set it to black and white setting is number one, I prefer black and white, and number one, this is in nowhere close to what my monitor looks like. So I feel I'm showing you false color if I put it up on these big screens. But all all that we're doing here is just taking the color out because I think it's a good leveler. Um, and I don't know if you can see Courtney, but if you look at Courtney and you look at that, you're seeing what you're shooting, which I, I think is, is really nice. Are we, um, did I darken it? Let me just go into my settings here. I just want to make sure I didn't, I'm not lying to everyone. No, there's, there's, there's nothing on the exposures as it should be. I've just um, popped the whites a little bit, taken the blacks down a little bit. But you know what, let me even this out. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's just do, uh, is that does it, how is the color? Is it not good? Not good. Okay. So I thought, okay. All right. So that's, that's a little more honest because all I've done is taken the saturation out. So, um, my biggest challenge of the evening is making Courtney smile because Courtney doesn't like to smile. So I usually have some jokes, but she's heard most of them. Happy, happy. All right, so um, if I was saying, so, you know, Courtney, this is your friend. Look up towards the light. Think, bring your chin up towards that light a little bit. And lift your chin and think happy and eyes back towards me. And, and, there we go. So, um, just super, super simple. Um, but I think the quality of light is really, really beautiful. Um, and that's as all I've done is I say I've taken the saturation out, but that's pretty that's straight out of camera, which is a really good starting place, right? We, I know you all have we all have our settings and stuff, but that's literally straight out of camera. So often I would just shoot like this. Um, sometimes if I want to add a little more interest to it, 
I could use a full flex. Can we use a full flex? And I'll show you guys what one light and a full flex will do. That's a good one, Courtney. Anybody got any questions? Please just shout out if you do. Mom? Any questions, Mom? I'll call you later. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll just put it under her chin, I think. Also. So let's say you were in a position and you didn't have somebody who was as naturally photogenic as Courtney and you felt you needed uh, a little help under the chin or something like that. So one row to lighten a full flex. Oh my God, you look 10 years younger. What happened? Wow. Last time I saw Courtney, her hair was blonde. There we go. So uh, let's see the difference that makes. Um, once again, I apologize for the, the slow tethering. It's taking a minute. So, you know, if you guys, if, if anybody's doing like corporate headshots or something and you want a super simple setup, I think this is a really nice way to go. Um, and here they come now. And that's just giving that little bit of light um, under the chin, which I think makes her a really pretty portrait. Uh, the, another thing about Rotolite, and somebody more technical than me might be able to explain it better, is uh, when I'm shooting strobe, I find that the distance, the, f the fall off of the strobe, the, s the strobe seems to go um, fall off much quicker. So let's say I've got a strobe here. You know, by the time the light gets to about here, I find it's, I find it's really falling off fast. So often with strobe, I would find I would have to uh, light a background as well if I wanted to kind of get a similar kind of feel. One thing I love about Rotolite is that the light seems to travel further. I don't know if that's uh, a, a real thing or not or if I'm making it up, but it works for me. So I've got Courtney a little further away than usual, but you can see that we're still kind of holding some detail in there and getting some shape. Uh, across that backdrop, which I really, really, really like. Um, let's uh, just try this another way. If we wanted, let's say we wanted to be a little more dramatic in our lighting, um, all I'm going to do is take this from that kind of beauty light and get a little more drama. And you can, you know, you, you can see, you can see exactly what's going to happen. Um, and we'll start with Courtney looking right at camera, and then we'll move a little bit more towards the light. What, did your cat die with that face? Oh. That's Courtney's model face. Let me see model face. Ooh, there it is. Now, come on, show me model face. Oh, yeah, there's my, ooh, model face. Um, so, you know, going to that much more drama, but still holding the detail in the highlights, much more dramatic. And then what we would probably do on something like that is then use the full flex to just put a little bit back in so we're not super dark on that side. We'll do one more. Okay. Happy cat face. <laughs> Courtney is one of these people that there's more cats living in her house than people, which always scares me. Is that right? I mean, it's two to one. It's not that bad. It's pretty yeah. bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Uh, and I have two cats. If I have three, there's a problem. What do you think? More cats than people is allowed? Look, cats need friends, okay? <laughs> yes. uh, you agree? That, that, Alexis, that didn't come in quite as much as I wanted it to. Yeah, I think we need to come back around. Okay, so I went a little too dramatic, so I'll come back around and I'll fix it. Yeah, there we go. And then we'll just bounce back a little bit, because that, that wasn't exactly the shot I wanted to take there. Oh, that's much better. Mia. I have such a great collection of 
you know, the crazy poses that that we've made uh, Courtney do. So, yeah, so I think, yeah, a little bit closer to what I want there. Still have drama, but low full light. So, let's say that we wanted to do something with the second light. Um, we're going to use it as a practical light first, so it's not doing anything, just looking good. Um, and think, turn your legs a little bit in towards the light. There we go, and then back towards, yeah, face back towards me. There we go. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, it's nice with eyes over my head. Okay, let's see how these look. So, this is not the most interesting setup in the world that we have here, but I find with a rotolite in the back sitting like that, I find that all of a sudden I've turned like a space that's a eh space into something really pretty. So I do this a lot. Um, sometimes I have one of these little kind of uh, hazer machines, not like a fog machine, but a hazer, and it just breaks up the, the light a little bit and has a, gives a really nice atmosphere. So um, what we can do is pop the power up a little bit now so we're actually gonna see a little more of the effect of the road light on the hair to get a little more fill there. And what I'm, what I'm trying to do is get a little flare, get a little feel of the flare. So I'm almost shooting into the light. Bring a little more in, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Can bring it this way a little? Uh, nah, it's all right, it's all right, I'll work with that. There we go. That's lovely. I like your red hair. Um, did they come in yet, or is that the one we were looking at before? Yeah, so something like that where I'm trying to catch some flair, trying to, you know, make more of a, an interesting portrait. Uh, so that's a couple of ways I use the rotolite. I don't, there's no secret sauce. It's just, there's a lot of you know, a lot of practice with it. Um, the way Alex moves them into position super, super fast is not as easy as Alex makes it look. If I was here by myself, we may have taken one photo. But um, so, you know, definitely some practice and, and um, you know, th these results are quite quick to come by. What I really like to do uh, when I'm showing off these lights is, and we've said this, you know, Courtney is very pleasant to look at and she is paid to look great for photos and that's her job. But we we don't all look like that. We don't all get the chance to photograph people that look like that. So can I take somebody's photo who's just sitting here and I just show come come just show you guys, you know, that you know, the the, the how they work for for real people. Hey, nice to meet, nice you. To meet you. So uh with this young man I think he has a great look, and I would like to make a dramatic photo of him. So, you know what? Let's keep the keep this, but I'll just move. Uh, you do that one, I'll do this one. Yeah. So I'm just going to try and get a little bit of side light on him here. I'll go drama here. Can you see it there? So guys, I don't know if you can see that, but you can you, you can see we've got this kind of soft soft light here, and then we're going to, to, to dark here, and then we're going to this light thing here that hopefully will make a really nice uh, um, kind of three-dimensional feel. Um, once again, I can see what I'm going to shoot, so let's try that. All right, what are you thinking about it? Classing and teacher next 
The food class? Mm -hmm. What are you teaching how to photograph food? Yeah. What's your favorite food? Corn, actually. Just corn? I'm going to give you the corn look. All right. I'll give you, oh, let me see the corn <laughs> look. There we go. This guy's funnier than me. It's not allowed. His humor works on camera. Are you married? No. You in a relationship? Yeah. Think about the one thing you haven't told your partner about. Uh, they say, there's a look. Uh, there is no more to be said. Um, so that's it. Maybe a little, little eerie. Let's 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 fix that a little bit on the front. But um, I saw that and I kind of let it go. Actually, it's, I think I, I thought I had a little more in the eye as well. Could you? Yeah. So kind of here. So once again, super quick, a, a, a quick way. And you know, once again, he's a good-looking guy, but. Let's just fix that by yeah. coming around to me a little bit more. There we go. There we go. And just come. There we go. Oh, there we go. You look like you're going to kill me. That's great. That looks lovely. So I think these are a little better. Um, so it looks like it looks like a portrait I would take. Um, two lights, get to where I need to go, super quick. Um, well done, still. Can you lighten that a little bit? And the other thing, as I was saying, is what's really nice is that this front light is playing nicely on the background here and giving us some, some background. I bet that's my mum on the phone. Nope. Um, cool, so let's do one other thing. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's put it kind of overhead, kind of, kind of right here. Another, another light I like to do for guys is uh, to have a light almost, almost overhead. Alex, the human sandbag. There we go. Chin up, chin up a little bit. There we go. Eyes into camera. Think sweet corn, sweet corn, sweet corn. Mmm, mmm, <laughs> sweet corn. Mmm. There we go. So these are dark and moody, but I think this guy suits the light. Um, <laughs> get to the funny moment. I actually love that. I really love that portrait. That's great. That's really good. Maybe that, one, that, might, that, might, that might have been corn out of can instead of, instead of like fresh corn. Uh, I'd like them to move over a bit. Let's see why they're not doing that. Yeah, so, you know, I, I kind of love it. I kind of love the, the feel. Anybody else want to see what this feels like to have your picture taken? Thank you. Come on, somebody. Come on. There we go. All right. What was your name? Ichin. Ichin. Nice to meet nice you. To meet you. Can I take my glasses? No, leave them on. We'll show you. We'll show you how. Uh, you know, we'll do a similar thing here with a kind of more of a beauty light for a lady, but similar kind of thing. I'm gonna hold that back. Can you hold that back there? That's it. And chin up towards me a little bit. There we go. Um, and we'll just bounce some light back in. Where are you from? Where are you from? I am originally from Taiwan. Taiwan? How long have you been here? 13 years. Whoa! You're a lifer. So, um,. What's really nice about this is the kind of dark, moody atmosphere. But um, because our light's overhead, another thing we can do to kind of just get a little bit of a feel. 
Well, let me show you this way. This way. All right. I mean, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love that, and I love the feel of it. Um, and I have detail in there that I'll show you that I can't pull out. Um, if I was going to do a, a, a super quick process on this, um, and I haven't done it because it's unfair to show you process, work out the camera, but I would... Just like a super, a super quick process on it would show you that I do have detail there. But you can see the, it's about the quality of the light, which is great. But I'll do one with this background lit up a little more. You a big Donald Trump fan? <laughs> is that a yes? Maybe? You volunteered. <laughs> uh, you look great. Thanks, Alex. So, you know, and then with my second light here, what I'm doing is just creating some, some more of an interesting background, which will come up within the next half an hour or so, if I'm lucky. Ta-da. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. But, th thank you. The reason I wanted to photograph people is because I wanted to show you that it's not just about, you know, Courtney, who's a person first, then a model, but... You know, just sim simplicity with two lights make for a great portrait. Does anyone have any questions? What lens are you using? Uh, this lens is a fixed 75 millimeter Leica SL F2. Are you doing manual focus? No, this is actually autofocus. I do often use manual focus, but this is autofocus. Um, and this is an SL2, everybody, if anybody wants to see one, because they're not out yet. That's it for questions. Come on. Yes, sir. Do you ever run into trouble with uh, the bare LEDs being visible instead of having it diffused? Do the LEDs ever come out? Never seen them. I've never seen them. You know, sometimes in glasses, maybe. Yeah. But no, I've never, I've never, I've never had that problem. I kind of like the the little LEDs coming out. Also, you know, the other thing about these, which is, they're they they are smart. They are making loads of modifiers for them. You can get a softbox for them. You can get a grid for them. If it's too harsh for you, put a put a put a silk up in front of them. Um, the reason I don't do all that here today is because I really want to no magic, no trickery. It's just I put the light up, I opened the barn doors and I turned it on and that's kind of what I wanted to show you rather than kind of, yeah, of course, I mean, if you do you have enough modifiers you can make anything look like anything. Mm -hmm. But this is literally out the box with the barn doors on and that's, I think, a good way to, to show them. But it, I, I definitely do play with the, um, the grids. I love the grids that they make. Um, you know, sometimes if I if I need a bigger area of light, I'll put three or four of them behind a silk, you know, and get that kind of thing. So, you know, they're, they're very, very versatile in that way. But for most of what I do, which is the intimate one-person portrait, two lights, bada bing. Yes, sir? What uh, do they balance that factor? They are, there's different, there is different, um, Models, uh, I believe. These guys are anywhere between 4,300 and 6,300. So these these ones, yeah, are bicolor. Can I spin it? Yeah. It's this. It's that one. So these are. Oh no, these are not bicolor. That one's not bicolor. Oh, it's not. Maybe this one's bicolor. Yeah. No, this one's no one's both of mine are not bicolor. So. Um, so they do make bicolor ones. So we have a bunch of them. Uh, Now calling daylight 60, 300, which is a little bit closer to like a printer spec than a camera normally would be, but if they have a wide range, they look good. They look pretty easy to match. Um, and what I, what I, the other thing saying about it, which is not something that has really come up tonight because I was talking about stills, I do do video. Um, one of my first experiences with LEDs on a video set was that I was doing like a talking head. I'd set like this 
my light up, and it looked great. I said, wow, it's great. Um, when my editor saw the footage, it was like a 45-minute take, and the LED had started out kind of warm, and then by the end of the shot, it had drifted to blue. And it's fine if it was all one thing, but he wanted to cut it up, and it, it was a lot of work to match the skin. What I like about the rotolites for doing video is they are super constant. They do not flicker, they do not change color. Um, I mean, it's a whole other thing to show you for video, but just because you asked, I thought I'd mention that they're incredibly reliable for that. The Neos, yeah. yeah. The, I, I, I wish I brought one with. I'm sure they have them in store if you want to look at them. They're about this size. They take six uh, AA batteries, or you can plug them in. They're incredibly powerful for what they are. They also have the variating um, power and color. Uh, listen, if you're outdoors in sunlight, you're outdoors in sunlight. I mean, you know, you, you know, but I mean, there's a reality of, you know, what what they're going to do. Um, but if you're in a like a, a situation like in in the, the for instance in this kind of store light or certainly this light in here, then they're just wonderful and they're truly portable, which is great. Hi. Do you find any benefit? Uh, I think what I like better is I like a circular reflection in my eyes. That would be the only thing I could think about. Um, and I like how they look when I'm using them practically in my photographs. I would never use a square LED as a prop in the back of my photograph. It just so uh, for non-light reasons, I, I, I that's what I like. I think that's what attracted to me. This is what attracted them to me in the first place. But you know, and the LED panels are, you know, they're practical for what they are, but they're not pretty. Anybody else? Anybody else? I don't know. Alex, any questions? No, Courtney. I know everything. You know everything. I switch around. Um, I like portrait lenses. Uh, I love that 75. Um, I my go-to is the 120 on the medium format. That's that's my go-to lens. But I wanted to to shoot with the SL tonight, so um, the 75 is is beautiful for that. I like portrait lenses. I, I like something to be just slightly longer than than standard. Um, but you know, you know what it is. The best camera is the one in your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. A non question. Yes, ma'am. How long do you normally have when you have to shoot people that review? It varies. I mean, I had like six minutes with Obama. Um, he, he, had, he had a busy day. I think he had golf. Um, it, it can really vary. If we're doing a, a shoot with them, like a, like a session, then you know it could be a couple of hours. If it's like a thing where you know you're doing a thing for the studio and you need portraits of everybody, it could be two three minutes. So, in saying that, from my experience, you only really have somebody's attention for the first couple of minutes when you're photographing them, and then you lose it. So. The, the sooner you can be ready and the sooner you can be in a position to get your picture. If you look through my shoots, um, I would say that nine out of 10 times, well, eight out of 10 times, the shot that I use is in the first 15 frames because that's when, I, that's when you're with me and then you, you glaze over. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's just how it is. It's like, what's my next meeting? I'm hungry. Does the nanny call? You know, people are just, how long can they be with you? If you can manage to keep a conversation, then you can manage to keep them with, but you just see them close over. I think I've said it before, but it's like, it's almost like a window. There's a, there's a window that opens when you're photographing somebody. It doesn't stay open. It just opens for this brief amount of time. 
and that's when you get your best shots. If you're photographing a model or something different, they're paid to be there and to be what you need them to be. Celebrity and real people is a whole different, whole different thing. To answer your question. You can sing, you can dance, you know, some say something outrageous, tell them to shake it off. Um, I have so many bad jokes. I mean, so many bad jokes. Um, it's hard. You can get them back, but it's, it's work. Um, you feel like you failed? <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, you still have the shot. I mean, you still get the shot. They're still there. The light's still good. Everything's still good, but... But so much, so much for me of a, what a portrait is, is, is more about when I look back on the portrait and think what happened in that minute. And when the stars all align, then my memories of what happened when taking that photo is the best photo. Very often there's a photo that nobody else would like, but for me that's a special moment. So I get to take away the experience and I get to put out into the world a photo. As I say, when, when these two align, that's magic for me. So yeah, there's a lot of times where I'll do the shoot and I think it should be A, B, and C. I give it to the person who's paying me and say, what, which ones do you like? And they say, we like G. And I'm like, okay. That's what it is. So yeah, I fail often. <laughs> Always. I mean, all, often. So it's never good enough. And I think it's the day that you think it's good enough is the day that you, do, you don't take photos anymore. How many great photos do you think you've taken in your life? None. <laughs> None. I think, I think I've taken half a dozen decent photos. I mean, I'm compa but in comparing myself to you, hundreds, <laughs> thousands. <laughs> Comparing myself to Avedon or Penn or the greats, I may be taking three or four that would be in their bottom load, I think. Or one. One. Two? I don't know. I take a lot of photos of my kid recently, which I think are up there. No, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I've taken any great photos. I've taken some okay ones. That's my cousin Jacob, by the way. He's a plant. <laughs> Thank you all very, very much for coming. I truly appreciate you coming out in this horrible uh, evening. And uh, Rot Rotolite is a, it's, it's, it's a genuine uh, asset to, to a lighting kit. It really, truly is. I hope I managed to show that honesty and with integrity, because I don't show honesty and integrity in anything else I do. So. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks so much.